So I wanted to take this opportunity to share how I clean my CPU blocks. So this is the CPU block out of my personal rig that had a crack in the top and EK was gracious enough to replace it under warranty and I really appreciate that. So I'll be showing that here, but what better time to clean out your, your loop than when you've got to replace a component in it. So you should probably do it at least once a year if not just changing the fluids. So I went ahead and already cleaned up the radiators, uh, took the vacuum to everything, cleaned it all out. And uh, the last thing I've got to do is cleaning up the CPU block. So you may have noticed that there are fins inside of the EK blocks and most blocks do have some kind of fin arrangement. And there's a couple little components in here. So I'm also going to go over how to best set this back up for your specific motherboard because it can change. For instance, this Z390 uh, from Gigabytes and Oris Masterboard is oriented so the die is vertical. So you want the fins to be perpendicular to that, to the left and to the right. However, there's some boards such as the EVGA Dark uh, Z390 board that the CPU is rotated 90 degrees. So if you want the label and the words to be facing upright, you actually need to take it apart and rotate everything so that the fins are facing up and down so it goes across the die correctly. So I'll show how to do that and how to best arrange it for this particular situation. But keep in mind that if you have a different motherboard orientation, you may need to adjust as necessary. So let's get into how I clean this and what tools you'll need. So for cleaning, I use a toothbrush and toothpaste. You want to use something that's got no braces in it. Um, this is just regular Crest Complete. It's got extra whitening. That's not going to matter too much to us, but something that's just going to carry away the debris that's inside of there and kill kind of some of the bacteria. Um, one thing you want to be careful about is if you're using anything alcohol based, it doesn't, it, it may ruin the plexi. So don't use alcohol on that. Um, to take it apart, you're going to need an Allen key. So a 2.5 metric will do that. And then you'll need some clean distilled water to rinse everything off. You don't want to put it back together um, without distilled water just to make sure you're eliminating any opportunity for biohazard growth or anything like that. So we've got those components here. Let's get into taking this thing apart and cleaning it out. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're looking at taking your, your block apart is make note of the way it's, cr it's oriented currently. So this one has this jet plate inside here and the jet plates can actually be replaced depending on what CPU you're using and it'll adjust the amount of water flow that goes through the block. So that'll depend on you know the, how much heat the block's producing and how much water needs to go through it. I've already got it set up for my 9900K, um, but you also want to make sure that the cold plate underneath the fins are oriented in the correct direction. So just make note of that. You can take a picture of it the way it is now before you take it apart to make sure you get everything back in the right place. When you're ready to take apart, use your 2.5 uh, metric and just remove these four bolts. Okay, now once that's removed, this will lift right off. So that is the cold plate. This is uh, usually nickel plated copper and you can see the fins uh, the way they're oriented in there. So this doesn't look too bad, but we'll go ahead and clean it up for the sake of this video. Here's the jet plate. And like I said, that there's a couple different types of jet plates, uh, depending on your specific setup. It could only go in here one way. There's a notch in there. So make sure it, it is in there cor correctly, um, but it's only gonna go fit in there one direction. Um, so we'll clean that up as well. And then these are just the water flow. There's actually two pieces to this. And there we go. Uh, you want to make sure you clean those off too. This is your last chance to make sure you've got everything oriented correctly when you put it back together. So make note of it. There's an O-ring underneath um, the retention plate. And if you didn't get a replacement O-ring, you definitely want to inspect this. So if you have a leak, that's where it'll come from, is from the O-rings. You'll never get a leak from here. It'll be from the O-ring that's around it. So make sure you go over this O-ring and check it out for cracks if it's dry. You can use a lubricant uh, to use, but don't use anything that's petrol-based because it will actually kind of degrade the rubber. So you want to use something that's um, safe. And I, I typically use a, a scuba diving lube, so it's called Crystal Lube. It's O2 safe and it won't corrode these types of O-rings. So that's what I use. Um, and I used it on this one previously. It still feels pretty good, so we're not gonna worry about lubricating it back up, but we do wanna make sure it's nice and clean. So now that we've got everything taken apart, okay, so once we got that, we do wanna clean the inside of this because that's where the O-ring seals against. So we're gonna make sure that that's clean because that's where the O-ring will seal against, and 
Let's do that next. So what I like to do with the toothpaste is take some and then squeeze it onto the edge here. So we have enough and then we don't actually contaminate the toothpaste by sticking a toothbrush in there. And then we can use however much we need and then wipe some back on later. So what we want to start with first is I guess the acrylic part. We don't really need to worry about the outside and this is actually the cracked one. So we're replacing that with, um, with the new one that I got from EK. So actually we don't need to clean this. It comes pretty good from EK. I'll wipe it down just to make sure that the seal where, where it seals is good. But other than that, it's gonna be okay. So we'll consider that one done. And all you're doing with the toothpaste is lightly brushing off any surface debris. You don't wanna scratch it up too bad or anything like that. Um, you're not gonna hurt it with toothpaste. Um, and it doesn't actually even matter if any of this is scratched, but you do want to, uh, that'll help you get any discoloration off there. With cleaning off this, the easiest thing to do is just take the bristles and go in the same direction as the fins. You're just trying to lift up anything that's in between the fins and around the ceiling surface so you get the best conduction of heat. Now you can see on this particular block that it's actually worn away a little bit just from the water hitting it and slowly wearing away the nickel, but that's okay. We're not too worried about that. Um, the nickel is it going to affect the heat transfer that much? And actually, if it wears away just a little, maybe it'll actually help because there's one less thing for it to have to transfer to. Okay, now that everything's cleaned off, we're just going to rinse it really well um, with some fresh water. So you can wait for everything to dry, but if you think about it, it really doesn't matter too much for the CPU block and everything to be completely dry when you reassemble it. Because what happens exact, what happens when you fill it with water? It'll get wet, right? So as long as all the seals are good and you wipe everything off, um, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's completely dry when you reassemble it. So for this one, we want the fins to be parallel to the die. Sorry, fins to be perpendicular to the die. So this orientation, so we know that's how it's going to go back on ultimately, but we got to start with the top. So the top in the, in the case will be oriented this way. So like this. We'll stick on the O-ring. Backing up a little bit, so the easiest thing to do is put this back inside. That's this little water diverter piece um, goes in there. And then the open part goes to the outlet because remember you could see the fins through there. So just put that back in and then set it right in. It should slide right into place right there where you can see through the outlet. And you can check that you're right by looking there and you can see it. Water comes in, splits, and then should come out through here across from the jet, which now you know is in the correct spot. And then to the outlet. So now everything is set back up. We've got the O-ring in place and the last piece is the plate.
Now what I like to do once I get all the screws almost in is kind of get it all back together, give it a look, make sure everything looks okay, everything's back in place, that it's very obviously settled, and then just give it a little wiggle to make sure everything is in uh, the right spots before I start tightening down. And then I tighten down in an X pattern to make sure that the pressure on the O-ring is even. So we got that one just, just snug. Oops. And then this is your last chance. So give it a look and make sure that there are no gaps. One thing I didn't note about this, so if you do actually clean your uh, acrylic plexi part, um, you may get rust inside of the screw holes if there's water in there. So that's why I didn't worry about drying it off, but if you are, uh, you wanna make sure that those are nice and dry uh, when you put it back in there so that you don't get any water inside. And that's it.